Open the door. Get on the floor. Everybody walk the dinosaur and get ready for Croc Geezy to bring the pain. He's good for one thing and one thing only, killing Chaos. So he'll be teaming up with the Salamanders of the Cold Shadow Plains to turn the Chosen of the Dark Gods into puddles as ODM Alfredino takes on his clanmate Demand. This will not be your standard monster brawl, Shagus and Carnos. Got some interesting strats coming out of both players here and quite the performance in this land before time. So place your bets and let's get this thing popping off. Sundown here in Lustria. Krotgar and Grimlock are going for an evening stroll with Hand of the Gods and Sacred Spawning of Zotal. No swiftness of Insul, which surprises me. Not sure I actually agree with that. I'd say it's more important than ever now with the changes to mass. You need something that can create space if you get surrounded, so I'm surprised to see him not have anything that allows him to escape if it gets scary. He's rolling with an Ancient Salamander and the Umbral Tide Hunting Pack. One for bonus for large duty, one for melting hordes of infantry, and the Cohort of Sotek for some cheap AP and tar pit potential. Two Cold One Spear Riders, a bunch of skinks, four chameleons, and the Pawox Pterodons flying high on the winds of magic above. So we've got a legit kite build for Lizardmen here, which is not something you see too often against Chaos. Generally, it's either Monster Mash with Dinos or Temple Guard Core with Barona's Time Warp, and either way, you're going straight into CQB, but they'll play Keep Away in this one, and it might just work because it is an infantry focused army with a heavy investment in the heavy metal for Chaos. Three Chosen means playing Keep Away was probably the right call for the children of the old ones. Spirit Leech, Fate of Buna, and I guess that's it for the for the Deathcaster. Throwing axes, tons of marauders, and a war giant alongside the face of perfection. Sigvald the Magnificent, who made out like a bandit in the last patch and has become a staple pick in quite a few matchups. One of the, the most improved lords we've seen over the last two years. Slanesh is pleased. In the back of the map for the Lizardmen, we've got a skink caster with Uranin's Thunderbutt. Curse of the Midnight Fart and Harmonic Ejaculation. And we'll get this thing started with a huge Hand of the Gods on the Deathcaster. My god. That has always been an amazing tool for deleting enemy casters from the game. If you don't have a lot of armor and Hand of the Gods hits you, especially if you're like a Tomb King's Lord and you're flammable, you're going to be in for a world of hurt. But even if you're not flammable, even if you're not a mummy, yeah, you'll get exploded by that thing pretty bad. Two Hand of the Gods should be able to kill a caster by themselves. Ancient Sally opening up with some magma from downtown. That'll clear out a lot of the Marauders and make it easier to get into the Chosen. And I think getting rid of the Marauders is probably the right call. Just land one or two good shots and one bad touch from the Cold One Spear Rider should be enough to send those Marauders running. And that's what they're doing right now. They're moving up to charge into the Marauders. Two of these units are already down well past half HP. You can see the Lizardmen have a surprising amount of ranged firepower going on right now, and the Pawak Sentinels are also providing some Overwatch fire with their Javelins, and a nice charge from Krotgar and the Spear Riders on this side, making sure that these guys tear route almost immediately. So, the Barbarians just not having a good day so far. Being an oiled up, muscle bound brute with zero armor does not pay dividends when fighting dinosaurs in the jungle. Who could have guessed? That's crazy. Naked Instagram model Marauders, not wearing protection, and it means that most of their infantry line is already destroyed by this powerful skirmish phase from the children of the old ones and a nasty shot coming in from the umbral tide too they'll have to be careful going after the chameleons because there's a lot of firepower that will severely punish their low armor and they don't have a lot of range with those throwing axes either fate of boring going down on the cold one spear riders we're gonna watch the hp just plummet on the left side of our screen that's gonna end up being about 2200, 2300 damage, and it won't bleed a lot of models. It's not what Fate of Buna is good for, but it will spread that damage evenly across everything and put them very low. So, one volley from throwing Axe Unit could probably get close to finishing them off for good. More Umbral Tide volleys coming in. They've already paid huge dividends for the Lizardmen, and you can see that they've kind of swung their entire formation out. Everything on the right flank, ready to collapse in and fire into the unshielded, unprotected sides of these Marauders and Chosen. Meanwhile, they're giving a lot of ground in the center, where the Skin Cohort are kind of being thrown into the meat grinder just to tank and do whatever they can to stuff up the advance. Sure, they'll be run over, but this has opened up a nice opportunity for Lizardmen to kite, move into the open field on Cold Shan Plains, and get a lot more volleys in. If they were fighting in the woods, that positioning would not be good for them, given this build's reliance on ranged firepower, but in the open plane, they could do a lot more damage. That Hand of the Gods, not quite able to finish off 
than a Chaos Sorcerer. Maybe a little bit YOLO. Might have been good to hold on to that for a more reliable shot. But ODM Demand gotten a little bit blobbed here. That means the Umbral Tide and Ant and Sally shots are really putting a whooping on the forces of Chaos right now. Uranus Thunderbolt about to rain down from the heavens and it's gonna hit the top of the tree. Yep, hit the canopy. Did not kill a single model there. Wind-up time on that spell might be a little bit slow. Pretty easy to dodge. And Spear Riders managing to finish off the Warhounds out on the Lizardmen left flank. Millions getting very aggressive firing into the canopy right now. Chaos Sorcerer managed to return to the fold. And the Giants and Chosen pushing out alongside Seafall the Magnificent. Trying to bring these Lizardmen to blows and force them into a melee grind where they will undoubtedly win. Curse of the Midnight Wind going down on a huge section of the Chaos Army. There's some Chosen, Bottom Runner Horsemen in that spell. That will open up an opportunity for Krokar to get a little bit more aggressive, but doesn't really want to fight in the woods. And the Chaos Giant taking a lot of damage from the Umbral Tide, who have 130 missile damage, and a lot of that is bonus versus large, so that'll raise that damage even higher. Chaos Giant will drop quickly if they're able to fire into him unabated. Even Chameleon Skinks and the Skink Cohort with the Javelins can rack up a lot of damage against that low armor. So all that HP only goes so far when you're a big blundering idiot, such as the life of a Chaos Giant. They're not the sharpest tools in the shed, we can just say that. Krotgar moving out of the woods to get away from these throwing axes, which have harassed him for quite a while now. Chosen and Sigvald continuing to push forward, and it looks like they'll have the speed to close in on the skin Cohort and start running them over. And honestly, at this point, Lizardmen need to commit something to give the Salamanders time to move away and fire into the more important stuff. If they can get rid of the Chaos Giant here, they'll be in pretty good shape because that means Krokgar has free reign on the battlefield to maybe cycle charge Sigvald and start doing some damage. The Auric Armor and that 8 regen tech per second makes it very hard to kill him, especially in the late game because he'll be perfect vigoring it up. I mean, he just doesn't get exhausted. He doesn't get tired. He has all the stamina in the world, and that means that he is extremely tough to kill for a lot of factions right now. Charmeleon used Flamethrower. It's super effective. The infantry has been getting demolished by all these ancient Sally shots, and the Umbral Tide, who are really specialized for killing large, are still not horrible at killing infantry. I mean, like I said, they have 130 missile damage a pop, so it'll still hurt Chosen. It'll still deal some decent damage to them. They're feeling it, for sure. The skin Cohort are dead. Sigvald reaped a terrible toll in and amongst them, and the Cohort of Sotek finally went into melee, and they just popped their refuse to die. Krotgar... This is a scary situation for him. Chosen to have enough mass at this point, and honestly, they might have had enough mass beforehand that if you don't have Swiftness of Insul, then they can kind of pin up even large monsters like Carnosaurs. And the giant, well, he's always been quite the large boy. A couple swings from his elm and the greenskin shields on his arms. All those war trophies with a couple Kryptonian breaths should be enough to finish off the cohort of Sotek pretty easy. Now, Refuse to Die will make it hard to kill them initially, and the Unbreakable will give them some kind of resilience against Terror, of course, but they'll be run over pretty quickly in that kind of engagement. Uranus Thunderbolt, I think mostly missing there. Might have killed... Eh, it doesn't look like it killed anything. Managed to dodge out of the way. Good micro for the Marauder Horsemen so far. They've been in the right position for most of this battle. The Giants... About to finish off the cohort of Sotek for good. All those units will be brought low to about 1 HP per model, and then it'll be just a formality to finish them off for good. A couple more jab shots and throwing axes should be more than enough to kill off the cohort, and they will not be able to tarp it for too much longer. And honestly, the friendly fire probably not helping them either. I mean, I said the Marauder horsemen have been in the right position for most of the battle, but to be fair, they haven't really zoned out the Salamanders in any way, shape, or form. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Lizardmen went for so much kite. The Chameleons are great for zoning out Marauder Horsemen. And so they haven't really been able to. Anytime they got close, they got blown up by the Umbral Tide, which is now dunking on the Chaos Giant. So this has been tough for the forces of Chaos up to this point. Croc Geezy going in and canceling his animation. Wave dashing on these Chosen. Something that's straight out of Super Smash Bros, man. What the hell was that? That was really weird looking. And uh, <laughs> the Marauder Horsemen and all the mobility for Chaos now moving around, trying to get some good shots into the really high value stuff. At this point, 
They haven't really killed too much of the important units for the Lizardmen. They've severely cramped the style of one Cold One Spear Rider and killed off another one. Besides that, Krokar is doing just fine. Umbral Tide are doing just fine. And the Ancient Salamander is doing just fine. It's out of ammo. It used all of its ammunition, which is usually a very good sign for the children of the old ones. If that thing is able to stay online the entire battle, use all its ammo shooting into Chosen and Marauders, then it's made back some very good value and can now be used in melee, cycle charging and causing terror. Remember, the Chosen are not a mutual psychology yet. When they get their Mark of Slash, they will be, but that will not be until game three, most likely, or if they get a DLC. So, for the moment, the Chosen have to rely on their high base leadership and the support from the Giant and Sigvald the Magnificent. Krotgar could maybe RKO that Giant, but I don't think he really wants to go in and fight it at this point, not with Sigvald nearby. The Chameleons have used all their ammo, so they'll use their high missile resist and their poison to charge in and just tar pit again while the Umbral Tide continues to shoot. And that Chaos Giant will not be long for this world with the Umbral Tide continuing to dunk on it. It looks like it might die in this engagement. Krokar went all the way in. I'm not sure that was the right call, but it looks like it might work out in Lizardman's favor. Got one attack in on the Giant, made it easy for the Umbral Tide to finish off this drunken fool. And the Behemoth is down while the Ancient Salamander and Krokar continue their rampage of terror. You ran in Thunderbolt. About to rain down on some Chosen. They will not get out of the way, and that got some great value from the Skink Caster, so well played from him. Hard to dodge with Chosen. They are not fast infantry by any stretch of the imagination. And now it's Dino Cycle Charge time. Keep away from Sigvald. Kill everything else and hope you have enough damage to kill him in the late game. He is still full HP, and Krotgar has no way to heal up. No Rev Crystal, no Lore of Life. That might hurt if we get into a position where Krotgar has to outduel Sigvald. But he does have a couple major advantages here. There's a lot more speed, there's a lot more terror, and a lot more cycle charge potential. And Chosen do not like being ridden down by a big effing Carnosaur that's named after a Transformer. They certainly do not. They're running for the hills. I would too. Everyone here would. Only Chosen of the Gods, of Slanesh in particular would not do so in that same situation. So everything that gets near Krokar right now is running. And now Chameleons are about to be chosen in melee and manage to route them off for good. And they might be able to hound them to the edges of the map. That's hilarious. You don't see that very often. Chameleon Skinks outdueling chosen in CQB, swarming them. But the Marauder Horsemen might be able to give those chosen the space they need to get their 770 HP asses back into this fight. Ancient Salamander has dropped very low after a duel with Sigvald the Thugnificent. And here comes Krokgeezy with a nice little somersault attack. Oh my God, the Chosen being torn up and that'll be Terror Route imminent for the elite line holders of the Dark Gods. Here comes Sigvald though, Krokgar is out of there. Ancient Salamander is one hit from death at this point. Lizardmen have way more troops, but Sigvald is full HP. And now we're into the grind. Very common with uh, the Scion of Slanesh now. It happens most of the battles I've seen with him, to be honest. You just don't have enough sustained DPS to goon him out early, generally speaking, at this point. He's usually one of, if not the last things to die on the Chaos roster because he's a footlord, because he's incredibly tanky, because he has high leadership, so it doesn't route. But that is one way to do it. Pin him in place with some Umbral Tide from behind, let Krokgar cycle charge in, and I mean, this looks good for the Lizardmen. Sigval's down to half HP, but his leadership has stabilized, and it's not really dropping at all, and he's really starting to go to town on what remains of this Lizardman army. Krokgar just routed. That's gonna leave the Umbral Tide and the Skink Priest in a situation where they have to outduel the Scion of Slanesh, and that is no easy feat. In fact, the Bounce Bar is in favor of Chaos right now. That's Slippery, which was new, added in the Twisted and the Twilight. 
but plus 24 melee defense, making it even harder to bring him low. 1200 HP left on the Barbie Ken doll. And Krotgar just returned to the fold. While the Umbral Tide continue their melee attacks, supported by the Skink Priest, but man, they are so low. Lizardmen do not have a lot of stuff left at this point. I don't know why, but Sacred Spawning of Zodal was just popped when he was far away. Not even in range. And Harmonic Convergence might have been a little bit early either. That means that spell will probably wear off quickly after he goes in and one swipe from Sliver Slash. All that's required from Sigvald kills the Lord, the source Old Blood. And the last defenders of Zodal will fall. Chaos takes the game in the late game on the back of Sigvald and his rapier. Wow. It felt like Lizardmen were in control for a big portion of that battle. I loved Alfredino's approach here with the full kite build. I love the army composition. I love how he used it. I think he had solid micro throughout. And we really saw how effective a kite build can be against Chaos. I mean, it's not something you think about too often because Chameleons don't have great armor piercing values. They don't have a lot of burst damage. And what's Chaos known for? Well, they're known for fast terror causing monsters and they're known for a lot of armor on pretty much everything across the board. Chameleons aren't gonna do a lot to penetrate that armor. But what they can do is zone out the Marauder Horsemen and the Marauder Horse Masters prevent them from messing up the Salamanders, prevent them from messing up Krotgar, and open up the opportunity for those units to shine. And I think that's what we really saw there. Ancient Salamander, Umbral Tide, both of them were fantastic. They got some great value in this one. Ancient Sally killing off some Chosen and a lot of Marauders, and the Umbral Tide doing a great job of killing the Chaos Giants and a lot of the Skirmish Cavalry for Chaos, while Krotgar played the hit and run game which is something that Grimlock affords that playstyle quite well. I mean, it allows him to move around the battlefield quickly and get in at the important targets to cause terror, to cycle charge, and basically play keep away from someone like Sigvald, leave him to the late game. Unfortunately, he just didn't have enough HP in the late game to get through the Scion of Slanesh. So it was a battle of very contrasting styles, a full kite build, that was micro pretty well, especially in the beginning of that game. I think Lizardman did a great job, but the build might have lacked a little bit of teeth because outside Krotgar, I'm not sure it has enough punching power to get through someone like Kolek or Sigvald and Krotgar can't necessarily win that engagement easily by himself. The Chaos Giant was not an impressive pick. It's a fun thought experiment, but as usual, it was pretty ass and Sigvald, well, the Blondu can put the team on his back for Chaos. Scary guy for sure. Great lord at this point. 